Well, I've got some fuel system stuff here and I wanted to go over and make a quick video with you and kind of just give you my input on the different ones. So we'll start over here with the radium engineering surge tank. Now I had this installed on my car, um, just your typical surge tank. So you got your one out feed and then you have your return from your engine and then this is like a return to your stock tank and it shows you uh, one of them will be um, your in from your stock fuel tank. So the stock fuel tank dumps it into here, then the pump in here sends it to the motor. It returns back to here and then anything extra comes out of here and returns back to the stock tank. So <clears throat> I'm taking this out of the equation because I feel like my fuel is getting hot. I've had two engine failures and I don't know if it's due to heat soaked fuel. <clears throat> now, if you think about uh, endurance racing, which is what we do, when you get down to about two or three gallons left in the tank, you don't have that cooling effect of your fuel. So this was actually mounted underneath the car. So we felt like maybe um, it was getting some heat radiated from the exhaust and all the heat uh, coming out of the engine bay going underneath, and maybe the aluminum can was getting hot. Now also, you're getting all of your <clears throat> fuel return, it goes directly back to this first. So your fuel rails on your engine block are gonna get warm, so any returned fuel is just going right back to this can. <clears throat> and you also have this 255 pump that is inside of here. So it cannot get rid of the heat. It would be cool if they put like fins on here to where it would try to you know, radiate some of the heat out of it, but I don't know if that's my issue but it's one of multiple issues that I'm trying to get away from. So I'm actually taking this off of my car right now and I might install it in the future. And if I do, I'm gonna install it in the trunk. Now, the reason why I mounted it underneath the car was because I didn't want a fuel leak to happen and this external surge tank be mounted in my compartment where my battery is. It's less subjected to, you know, inside car fires. I wanted it outside of the car if anything bad were to happen. So, I feel like could be my issue. Don't know what it is. Um, now, on to the Hydromat. Now, I tried running a Hydromat originally, but when they first came out, they didn't have any adapter pieces to adapt to a stock fuel pump. So since then, in the last year and a half, they've come up with this piece here, which actually adapts. If you look down inside, you can see that little brown O-ring. Well, you take a fuel pump here and it will adapt to that bottom nipple. And that piece there will go down inside of here and it fits just like so. Just like that. And then you will tighten this clamp and then, depending on how much room you have, you can put just a straight slip fitting like this. But, I just had to go to Napa because any regular old pipe thread does not fit this. You have to have this specialty fitting here. I'm not really sure what it's called, but this style adapter with that O-ring, he called it like a O-ring boss or something like that. But that is the style that adapts to the end of this Holly um, Hydromat fuel pump adapter. And if you look at how the threads are made here, it's actually made to accept an O-ring. So this is the legitimate piece that I need in my situation. I really needed it to have these threads with an elbow straight to a barbed fitting because I am going to be running the same stock style, uh, you know, fuel tank setup. So my pump, I'm going to do away with my stock <clears throat> because this is either a 110 or uh, like a 190, I'm not sure, but I'm increasing the size of my injectors um, on my J-Series Acker, so I don't want to get all the way to the tuners and then say, oh, I'm running out of fueling ability. So I'm, I'm basically just robbing the Walbro 255 that was inside the radium tank and I'm putting it on to my stock style setup. Now, a stock fuel pump 
the way that this was, it actually rested somewhere kind of like in this position. It gave you depth all the way to the bottom of the stock baffle. So what I ended up doing, I'm going to take this new pump since it's just a smidge longer. If you hold them side by side, this one here is about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch longer to the base. Let's see if I can pop this off. We'll hold them side by side here. So you can tell the size difference. So this is a higher liter per hour versus this. And I don't want this one to run out of fueling abilities. So I'm going to take this and with a really short piece of submersible hose, you have to remember, regular fuel line is not the same thing as submersible hose. Submersible fuel line has the coating on the outside and the coating on the inside. If you just use regular old fuel line, it's going to degrade from the outside in. So that make always make that uh, a valid a valid point to make because if you put regular fuel line in there, it's just going to degrade over time. Now, instead of having a piece of hose that connects these two that's five inches long, I'm going to make that hose basically really short. And what that's going to do, that's going to get my end down here flush. So I save that distance to where this adapter piece can go on. And then this piece here can get threaded on like so. And then I'll take my hydromat, which this is the version that I chose to go with two years ago. And I've, I've never ran it. Um, and basically that will go in the car and then this will adapt to it. And then I also bought the magnet kit. So if you were gonna buy a hydromat, I would recommend kind of <clears throat> opening up your fuel tank and seeing what style would work for you. But in my opinion, the bigger the better because the more surface area that you can cover in your fuel tank, the better off you are. Now, if we come over here to the car, I'm st I, I, I didn't want to go to a fuel cell because I just don't trust them. I like the fact that the stock fuel tank is so low, so I keep that center of gravity really low. Now, I'd also tried fuel tank foam. I don't know anybody that else has tried fuel tank foam, but it had only been in my car for a year, and you can see the pieces of the foam that are laying in there. And basically, I was just trying to control fuel slosh, but it degraded so bad that I'm still in the midst of cleaning it up. But you can see uh, bottom left, that would be where my fuel dumps in. So basically what I, you can see where I tried to cut the uh, baffle. But I gotta get in there, clean all that stuff out, clean all the fuel out, and try to remove that baffle which they actually spot welded in. So that's gonna be a little difficult trying to remove it from inside the car. But I'm gonna attempt to anyways. Um, but all fuel tanks are made differently. Some don't have baffles and little bowls like that one. <clears throat> but um, I'll figure out a way to do it one way or another. But I would never recommend using fuel tank foam. Not unless it's only for a short period of time, and then you're going to remove it and change it. But for the hassle that it is, I would not recommend it at all. As far as the radium surge tank, every application is different. Now when you order those kits, they come with all of your your necessary wiring harnesses and your relays and stuff like that um, but you are going to pay a pretty penny for a radium surge tank there i think that one that kit costs close to 500 bucks but it's really really quality as far as what you get in the machine work um, that's into it now i've already robbed the uh, fuel pump off of this because i'm going to use it but I see a little bit of staining and I feel like maybe I got a hold to some ethanol fuel when it wasn't supposed to be any ethanol in it, but you just can't trust the gas stations that we have nowadays. It is what it is. But not going to knock their company because they make a really good quality product. Um, I just think that its purpose is well used in other areas. Um, and it may not have been my problem at all, but I do feel like my fuel was getting hot. Um, I could physically put my hand on it and feel the heat that was coming off of it. I never took a temp gun to it, but I should have. Um, I'm going to say it probably got somewhere close to 140, 150 degrees. She was, she was pretty hot. You couldn't hold your hand on it. Um, but like I say, every situation is different. Um, mine was mounted under the car. 
I have read on a forum where someone mounted theirs in the engine bay itself and they never had a problem up until the point they drove their car to the mountains where they were putting it under more of a load and that's when they started having fuel cut issues. So that was the one forum that made me start thinking like, okay, it could be my fuel um, that was causing my issue. But uh, in that situation, what you would do where your fuel comes to return, I would recommend buying a fuel cooler and you can just plumb that in line. That way it runs through the cooler before it dumps back into it. Um, because, you know, my issue was not when the car still had 10 gallons of fuel in it. Because when it had 10 gallons of fuel, the fuel has its own, you know, temperature. And then when I run down and I'm only down to like two or three gallons left in the car, that's when I started noticing issues. So at about an hour and a half into racing, it was 30 minutes before fuel up. I only have about four gallons left in my tank, and that's when we always had issues. So got my, got my sweet girl with me helping today. So, but that's, a, that's gonna be about it. Um, my recommendation would be going with the, the Holly Hydromat. So that, that's the direction that I'm gonna head now. Um, if you ever did go with a radium search tank, I would recommend uh, keeping it away from any source of heat and possibly run a fuel cooler because you can't cool your fuel too much but you can have a problem with your fuel getting hot and you got to think on engines engine bays get to over 200 degrees and then your fuel rails and all of your metal fuel lines or you know whatever your vehicle is all that heat ends up going back and instead of dumping it into the main tank it's dumping it into a little tiny two liter bottle or 1.5 liter bottle that is metal so it just sits there and radiates that heat and also the heat that's coming from the fuel pump so you got your stock fuel pump in your car running constantly and you have this bigger fuel pump that is inside of that tank so it just can't escape the heat it's relying on the fuel to keep it cool well when you're running low on fuel you lose that cooling effect and then your fuel just raises in temperature um, Another thing, if you wanted to run a radium surge tank, I would recommend running the exact same fuel pump in both. So in my situation, I had uh, like a 190 feeding a 255. So that essentially would be a no-no because you could run the surge tank dry faster than you could run the big tank dry. And you don't want that. You would actually want it in reverse you would want the smaller fuel pump in this tank and the bigger fuel pump in your main tank. That way you wouldn't get as much return to this because let's just say I can drain this down at wide open throttle in a minute and if my stock tank can't fill this back up fast enough, then I've created air in this tank which is gonna send pockets of air in my fuel and lean conditions and burn up cylinders. So. And that's exactly what situation that I'm running into. And I'll show you a peek of that. So here's my new short block, all completely assembled. Honda J-Series V6. And here are the old pistons. So you can tell we were getting a little scoring there. And then this was cylinder number two, and you can tell what it did. Now you could say this is ring gap. You could say this was detonation, pre-detonation. But there's so many variables that it could be. So it could be lean conditions where I wasn't getting enough fuel. Uh, I could have been, uh, my fuel was too hot, so my combustion temperatures were too high. I could have been getting, you know, um, vapor locked to where I was getting uh, space that piece, you know, spaces of air and somewhere in the fuel line. Um, there's just so many variables that it could be. Another variable was, I think that maybe my spark plug was a little too hot on too high of a heat range. So I was running a six or a five, so I'm gonna drop it all the way down to a nine to where um, we're not worried about maybe the plug itself was glowing like a glow plug and causing the issue. So I don't know why my camera just will not focus on the plug. There we go. So if you can see that plug, I'm not sure if you know how to read plugs or what, but this plug had about two hours of runtime on it and you know it is what it is but 
I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hope that was informative to you between the Holly Hydra mat and the radium surge tank and some fuel foam. So that's just my two cents on it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Have a good